preach on, sister. Hi there, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Yes, two videos in one weekend. Mark this on your calendars because it may never happen again. Anyway, I thought I would bring you a pair of album reviews today, uh, one of which is by an artist who's in the sixth decade of her recording career, and the other one of which is uh, just midway through his first decade. Uh, let's go with that one first, shall we? It is Jubilee Road, the third album by British singer-songwriter Tom O'Dell. Now, I was aware of Tom O'Dell when his debut album, Long Way Down, was released, uh, but I didn't give him a try until his sophomore album, Wrong Crowd. And for some reason, I do that with uh, several artists. I I've done that with several artists. I basically ignore them until their second album comes out. I assume it's because, okay, if their se second album comes out, and it's particularly if it's on the same label, I think, oh, okay, maybe this is an artist that's going to stick around a while, so I'll give him a try. I assume that's why I do that, but anyway. Uh, after I listening to both albums of his, it did not take long for me to become a fan, and as a result, I was eagerly awaiting this album. Uh, now, Tom O'Dell cites Elton John as a major influence, and you can definitely hear it through his music, uh, with the very strong piano melodies in nearly every one of his songs. And uh, being a piano-based pop rock singer-songwriter who sometimes adds dashes of soul into a sound, uh, there are traces of Billy Joel, Randy Newman, and pretty much anybody in between that you can think of. Now, several of the songs on this album are kind of like the panoramic-sounding story songs uh, that Elton John uh, was was a trademark of Elton John's, kind of like uh, well, Queen of Diamonds and Jubilee Road, the title track, are a couple of good examples of that. Uh, but then are, there's another one or two in here in the same vein that kind of bring to mind a little bit more Billy Joel, like uh, Don't Belong in Hollywood. Although that might be a bit of a more of a psychological uh, recollection of Billy Joel just because he had a song called Say Goodbye to Hollywood. Uh, but anyway, there's a, a great mid-tempo track which is the first single called If You Want to Love Somebody uh, and that has a little bit piano flourish in the chorus uh, that just kind of makes you go, ooh, and you'll, you'll recognize it when you hear it if you listen to the song. Uh, and that song just kind of builds to a a kind of a soaring climax with what sounds like a full choir doing background vocals and that you know that again makes it sound a little bit closer to one of Billy Joel's livelier blue-eyed soul driven moments. Uh, the next song after that Son of an Only Child that's one of the standouts on this album it starts as a kind of a quiet piano ballad and then then it kind of shifts gears into a, a bit more of a syncopated rhythm and brings in a fuzzy guitar sound and then a bit later after that the horns come in, and so by the end it's just like this full-on 70s Elton John rocker. And then there's another standout track on this album called China Dolls. Now that one opens with a kind of a bouncy, folkish beat with a, a strummy acoustic guitar that reminds me of uh, Cecilia by Simon and Garfunkel. And, and then, you know, the piano comes in a bit later and it reminds you again of this high-energy Billy Joel type of thing. But then by the end of the song we've got a saxophone in it that makes it that makes me think of Bruce Springsteen's E Street Band. So, I mean, there's, oh, there's just all, all sorts of surprises on this album. Uh, another up-tempo song, another good up-tempo song, is Go Tell Her Now. And I've listened to it several times, and I cannot think of who that reminds me of, but it's a fun song. And as far as ballads go, uh, Half As Good As You is probably the best ballad on the album. That's uh, a duet with a female singer named Alice Merton. And not only is the song good, but one of the things that's kind of bugged me about pop music lately is when you have a male singer and a female singer singing side by side, a lot of times they'll sing the same note. It might be in a different octave, but it's the same note. And that's always struck me as kind of lazy and frankly kind of wasteful because kind of arguably the intent of two singers, especially a male singer and a female singer, is harmony is where it really, that really shines it and it reveal, reveals its true potential and they sing the same note uh, part way through the song but it just takes the song to a whole different level when they finally go into singing harmony and that's one of the best male female harmonies i've heard in a long time so yeah that is definitely a highlight of the, of the album half as good as you i'm kind of torn on this album in a way because i think tom odell's stronger moments 
and his more memorable moments are the more up-tempo songs, but at the same time, they don't give him the chance to really stretch out with these pretty piano melodies that he's capable of, and, and you know, that, that really shows another side of him that's just really great. Now, one of the things about Tom O'Dell, and it's one of the things that attracted me to him in the first place, is he's got a bit of an idiosyncratic voice, and you know how I feel about idiosyncratic voices. Uh, it's a bit, I guess you'd say, less finely tuned than, say, uh, an Elton John or a Billy Joel. Uh, it's, it's a little uh, a little off-key sometimes and a little bit rough around the edges, uh, but as I said, that's part of his charm, for me at least. Uh, and in the first two, in his first two albums, he had kind of this wailing refrain, uh, especially when he did count-offs, you know, like one, two, three, four. Uh, it sounded like he was hollering them from across the studio. And, and I don't know if that was actually the case or if it was, you know, some kind of a filter that they put on his voice after the fact. But, uh, yeah, that and some of the wildness of his voice, I guess you'd say, in that respect, is kind of missing off this album. Uh, although I'm not missing it as much now that I've given this album several listens. But in a way, it's kind of called for. I mean, especially now that he's on his third album, uh, you know, he kind of needs that maturity. And I mean, you know, the cover art also is kind of, you know, a sign of his, uh, shows a more mature side or suggests a more mature side. Although one of the holdovers, I guess you'd say, from previous albums into this one is uh, whistling. He would once or twice on this album and a few times on previous albums, he would whistle the uh, melody line from the song either at the beginning or further into it. So he does hang on to that. So it's nice to have a little bit of, uh, still have a little bit of whimsy and uh, lightheartedness, I guess you'd say, in this album. This is probably the album that has grown on me the most since its first listen of any album this year. So uh, yeah, it's, it's just a fantastic album. It was well worth the wait. So yeah, if you haven't heard Tom O'Dell before, give this album and his previous albums a listen. It is just fantastic. All right, the second album I'll be talking about today is the 36th album by legendary singer Barbra Streisand, entitled Walls. Now, I've never been a particular fan of Barbra Streisand. I don't dislike her. Uh, she's somebody whose talent I've always respected. It's just, you know, if, if you'd asked me a couple months ago if I was eagerly awaiting the new Barbra Streisand album, I probably would have laughed at you. Uh, but that all changed when the first single from this album came out called Don't Lie to Me. I'll be talking about that in a minute. Uh, the video just brought me to tears. And, I mean, if you haven't heard about this album before now, uh, you probably should have. It's very much a commentary on the state of our country and the world uh, as it is right now that, frankly, I don't see how anybody can argue with. Now, I'm, I'm going to try and keep this review from getting too political, uh, but it's going to be a little hard with this album. Uh, you know, I, I don't like to go into political stuff on my channel. This is a music channel, so I apologize in advance if I do. But honestly, nearly every single lyric on this album is something that has come across my mind at some point over the last couple of years in particular. Now, she co-wrote just three of the songs on this album, and I'll talk about them first. Uh, the first track on the album, What's On My Mind, it starts out with a Spanish guitar, which I have to wonder if uh, that was just kind of an extra little jab at Donald Trump on uh, Streisand's part, uh, just because of his uh, controversial immigration policy. But uh, yeah, the lyrics, as I've said, the lyrics on many of these songs brought me to tears at, at several points. Uh, one of the lyrics in this song is, And love cannot exist alone. It must be shared, it must be shown. The next generation colorblind, that's what's on my mind. I mean, that, that blind particular just... It started, it made me misty eyed. Uh, I just hope that everybody becomes colorblind uh, in very short order. The young generation in particular is uh, well on its way to doing that. Uh, the first single, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, Don't Lie to Me. Uh, the video for that is just amazing. You've got to go YouTube it. Uh, and that song in particular is an unveiled and pointed criticism of Donald Trump, uh, especially having to do with his dishonesty. Uh, so again, the lyrics. How do you win if we all lose? You change the facts to justify. How do you sleep when the world is burning? Everyone answers to someone. So, yeah, just the lyrics, as I said, the lyrics drive me to tears at some points. And uh, the other song that she co-wrote is called The Rain Will Fall. That is one of the standouts on this album. Uh, it's a great metaphor for karma and comeuppance that uh, hopefully will befall uh, you-know-who before too much longer. Uh, the lyrics again, we can build a wall to heaven's gate, make tomorrow yesterday, 
but our tears of rage will break it down. The storm is on its way. I mean, honestly, if if Barbra Streisand doesn't at least get a Grammy nomination for Album of the Year for this, it's an injustice in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, all the other songs on here are just fantastic. Uh, there's a, uh, the title track, Walls. It deals with you know all the meanings and implications of walls, both physical and metaphorical. Uh, that's just, just a great song. I mean, the lyrics on this album, as I said several times, are just outstanding. Uh, the song Lady Liberty, that uh, interpolates passages from Emma Lazarus's Statue of Liberty poem, The New Colossus, uh, which is displayed on a plaque inside the statue's pedestal. Uh, the lyrics mention 9-11, which, you know, to me, I can't help but think about how united this country was after 9-11 compared to how divided it is now. I mean, it's, it's like, I'm sure everybody else wanders along with me. How did we get to this point? I mean, honestly. Uh, but anyway, to balance out the negativity on this album, uh, Barbara adds several songs with a more optimistic and positive vibe. Uh, there's a song called Better Angels, which was inspired by the closing paragraph of President Abraham Lincoln's first inaugural address, uh, which in part appealed to, quote-unquote, the better angels of our nature. Uh, there's a song called Love's Never Wrong, and that's just a beautiful song about how healing and strengthening love can be, uh, regardless of color or gender. I mean, hey, preaching to the choir here, Barbara. And then there's a an ingenious medley of the John Lennon song Imagine and the Louis Armstrong classic What a Wonderful World. And it's it's not done like most other medleys where it's just, you know, the one song scotch taped to another song just at the end, you know, just one song going into the other. In this one, they interlace the vocals or the uh, the lyrics between the two songs, so it just kind of goes back and forth between the two songs. It's just fantastic. It's it's an interesting contrast in a way. But yeah, that's, that's one of the highlights. And uh, there's a cover of the Backrack David classic, What the World Needs Now. Uh, it's got Michael McDonald and Babyface on guest vocals, and that's just... I'm, I'm using the word fantastic again. I've used it a lot in this, out, in this review just because every song on here is just fantastic. And then the closing song of this album is uh, the American songbook classic, Happy Days Are Here Again. Uh, it's a song that Barbara Streisand recorded originally back on her very first album 55 years ago. And so not only does it give the album closing a little wisp of hope, you know, a little optimism there, but it's also kind of brings brings her career full circle. I mean, she's not done recording, but it's kind of, you know, a song from her very first album and a song, you know, becomes a song, a re-recorded song for her latest album. So I just thought that was an amazing little touch. But uh, yeah, at 76 years old, her voice is still as gorgeous and vibrant and absolutely flawless as it ever was. So, but yeah, I mean, this is just an absolutely fantastic album. I'm honestly not much for albums that get into socio-political stuff or, you know, message albums or anything like that. But this one, I just had... To, this was an album that I needed, honestly, because I've just been feeling so hopeless about the state of the world lately that it's was starting to really bother me. But yeah, this... So yeah, listening to this album was just really cathartic for me, and I just absolutely love it. It is definitely in my top ten very, very possibly in my top five for the year. So, yeah. In my opinion, everybody needs to listen to this, uh, regardless of your political affiliation. So, uh, yeah, that is it for my album reviews for today. Uh, yeah, both of them, just very fantastic albums. Uh, the second one especially, very meaningful to me uh, at this point in time. So, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. Um, favorite albums by these artists, or any favorite albums you think maybe I should listen to. Uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't yet. I would love to have you as a subscriber. Thank you so, so much for watching. It really means a lot to me. I'll see you again soon, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.